everyone, I'm Leanne. Hello, I'm Jeannie. And we're the Loose Thread Stitchers. And today is August 16th, it's Wednesday morning. Um, it's been a minute since we've been on. Um, we've been busy, <laughs> guess you could say. Um, so here we are. It's, it's our 18th floss tube. Yes, it is. Um, it's been no rain for me, except for we got an inch the other day, and Jeannie's got a lot more rain than I have. Um, we're supposed to get more storms tonight, so I'm hoping, upon hopes, that we get more, because we, since May, we've had hardly anything. We're pretty crispy. It's been, but it's a beautiful day today, so. It's going to get hot. Yeah, get hot. Next week, we're going to get, like, close to 100 again. 90s, yeah, high 90s. over the weekend. Yep, yep. Okay, um, so the first thing is we'll start with FFOs, yes? Mm-hmm. Um, Our fully finished objects. <laughs> I have one. I have one. I have one. I've been working on this for my small. It's called Summer Schoolhouse Lessons in Abyssadarian, and it's lesson number one, and it's by Brenda Gervais. And she did it on 28-count mushroom, and I it was too light for me. So I did mine on 28 count, actually, it's called Abyssadarian by R&R &R Fabrics. But here it is finished. So cute. It is, and it's one over one on 28. And I really like the coverage one over one gives you. I ran into a problem. Um, I had done the whole bottom row, and then I went back. This skinny row here is satin stitching, and I did that the very last thing. Well, as I was satin stitching, I ran into this flower. So then I went, uh oh. So what I did is I went on vacation and I took this with me and I had to rip out these three starting right at this top part. I had, I sat down at the lake and I ripped out. And ripping out one over one is not a good time. It's hard because you got this little thread and you know, you can probably pull two or three and then because of the going through the fibers in its Valdani thread, it, it like it shreds, yeah. But then it gets all kinky and it's... Right, so then I flipped it over and I started using my seam ripper and that seemed to help quite a bit. But mm. So on vacation, I ripped those three out and then once I got home, I re-stitched them and they, they, they turned out okay. And this is, it's kind of a tealy, kind of a dirty teal. Um, Chenille, and it's called Sequoia, and it's by, um, not Dams on the Needle, what's the Lady other one? Dot. Yeah, Lady Dot Creates, that's it. And I did change the color of the house. The house is, it was wood smoke instead of what what the called for was, because the called for blended right in, if you can see the picture. I put the picture there. Can you see it's much lighter? It's the exact color of this fabric, so I... I had to darken it up. But other than that, I used all the called for um, colors and I, I really love it. I stuffed it with sawdust. Um, so it's done. Yay, now there's what, five? There's total? a total of five. There's four patterns and one of the patterns has two pillows in it. It's a man and a woman in separate pillows. But there's five with the continuing alphabet. So this goes through G. And then the next one picks up and each one has a continuing set of the alphabets all the way to Z. So this will be um, the first one. And I switched to a different small, not, I didn't pick another schoolhouse right now, I picked a fall one, so. Will you do the other four in the same um, fabric? Um, yes, I will. I have this bag I made from Teresa Colgate fabric. I think it's called Stitchy Birds. And I have all of the patterns. See, like here's here's those two I was talking about, the man and the woman. And then here's another house. And then the last one is kind of like a a vase with flowers. And, um, but these are all I already have all of the fabric stitched or ready to go. They're all in pieces. And the edge is finished. Yeah, so um, it's R&R. &R. Um, this one says French roast. I think I could, didn't have enough of the abyssadarian, but they look identical. So I had to pick. Now on that last chart, it shows on the back all of them. Oh, yeah, it does. There you go. 
there. Yeah. That's good. So they're all in there. And that's what I like. I have an old enamel oval. It almost looked like it came out of a roaster. It has skinny mm. little handles mm -hmm. on the side metal. And the drip tray light. -like. Yeah, and, and um, they'd fit really nice in there. So that's my plan is to put them in there. But right now I'm working on a different fall project for my small. And then, you know, as time permits, I'll go back to these little guys. But it was really fun. I do like one over one. I don't like ripping out one over one. But it really, really, really has good coverage. I really like the coverage it has. It's it's really pretty. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's my FFO. Okay. Um, I had stitched Bless This Farmhouse in June for Cross Stitch Camp, Colorado Cross Stitch Camp. And I finished it and I got it fully finished. Oh, cute. <laughs> so, you can check on the back. And that's with sawdust. And then my July cross stitch camp was Summer Sweets. Yeah, Pinky. I want to do that one. That one is so pretty. Yeah, there we go. Yep. Especially by the, scattered seed. Yep, the blue and that and the red are just awesome. The blue is only these little hearts. Oh, that's it. Yeah. I thought the bird was all blue. No, no. no. So here's my finish. Well, my bird might be blue. Mm. Oh, okay. I thought the bird was blue. I was excited because of that blue. That's it, just those little hearts. Bust her bubble. Oh, yeah. no, you did. I might reverse that. I might use the gray for the hearts and the blue for the bird. But, okay, can you can you see blue? No. No, it's very, and it's oh. the called four. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna switch that out. Okay, and then I did my three state uh, thread milk. I did Florida for our oldest son. I did Wisconsin for our youngest son and daughter-in-law and granddaughter and grandson. And then I did Minnesota for us. And we were at a Michael's one time and I saw this Tim Holt kind of, I don't call it a shelf or box. So I thought, oh, okay, this would work. But each section is a different size. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah, you can see that. Yeah, I didn't notice it until I came to make them. Oh. So, but it still works. Wisconsin looks crooked. But, yeah, so. Oh, it's interesting. Done. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things you get all done, and it's like, is it me? <laughs> and then um, wordplay, that was on my Whipco. Um, so I did August wordplay earlier and did that, but then I did September wordplay and I finished both of them. And I hang them here in my sewing room on a um, file cabinet, metal file cabinet door. So these are ready to, well, I had October or August up, so. And there, I did the um, DMC conversion because they have fancy, they have general arts and they have, um, you have other ones in there too. But yeah, so I did the DMC. And then my birthday start this year was this um, Irish Blessing by Ty Tidy Modernist. So cute, I love the fabric, or the flosses. And here she is. It's with the call for DMC on 18 count white Ada. Nice. May your troubles be less and your blessings be more and nothing but happiness come through your door. <laughs> Isn't that true? That's a good blessing. It is. Yeah. So those are my fully finishes in the last month and a half. Yeah. So. Jeannie had her son come up for a couple weeks from Florida and then there was a week in between there, and then I went on vacation for a week, and then we came back from vacation, and then we went on her birthday trip. Yeah. And here we are. And I'm leaving again on Friday to go to Orinoco with my husband to stay overnight. It's called Gold Rush Days, and the whole town of Orinoco is antiques. And then we do that, and then we stay overnight at a hotel in Rochester, because then they have Gold Rush down at the fairgrounds in Rochester, too, with... Tons of antique people also. So we do that for two antiques days. Antiques flea market, yeah. 
So I haven't been home for like a whole week in a long time. <laughs> Especially, well, Tom's all done with physical therapy. He's doing great. He's, again, thank you for all your prayers and everything. Um, he's doing great. I don't know what else to say. He's, and we just finished physical therapy, occupational therapy. Everything is good to go. So now it's just a doctor appointment here and there. Nothing. Yeah, we just have a couple of weeks. He has another programming, and that'll probably be his final programming for a while. Then we see her every six months, and that's it. We're, we're done. So hopefully mm. now I'll get to stay home a little bit. Cause have I, a normal schedule? Yeah, because it's been nuts. But you're still doing grandkids a couple a Days. day or two a week. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Um, and they'll be going back to school, but then we'll do morning and then after school for those couple days a week. And then... Um, I don't know. I just feel like I've been going and going and going and going, and I. It'll be nice to be home. Yeah. You see my schoolgirl. Oh, oh, it looks pretty gross. <laughs> That's right. But it's like okay, could do the floss tube at my house, and she goes, "Good. I don't have to. <laughs> I don't have to clean it because it's a mess." So that's one of the first things I want to do is kind of put some stuff away. Oh my gosh. It's... Well, yeah, and like Charlotte says, take pictures so you know where you put them. <laughs> right. Because I don't know. I Sometimes I forget where I put them. But I mean, if you put stuff where they normally go, it's okay. Yeah, but we got new stuff. I know. I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Well, hopefully I'll have... I would like to, you know... Have I had a whole day home? Maybe one. Well, but then what? Last month, when you did have a whole day home, you decided to have a Leanne day and go out and about. Well, I did because I hadn't had a Leanne day in months. That was because my husband was bad, and then he got better. <laughs> I know, so I'm hoping to be home more now. I am. Well, I think we're kind of ending. Hopefully, too, we'll get a little cooler weather. and. Yeah, it, I don't, yeah. You know, it's going to be like last spring. We had winter into the end of April. We had snow. And then all of a sudden, it was summer. We'll probably have summer into September, and then it'll be winter. There's a ton of trees turning color already, yes. and this is way too early. And they said the colors probably won't be the bright colors they normally are because of the drought we've had. Oh, the trees are all stressed. Yeah, they're very stressed, and they're going into hibernation already. But I have seen geese in their formation. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I hope that's not a sign of early Do you winter. know what, when geese fly in a V, one line, one side is longer than the other? Really? Yeah. Oh. Do you know why? No. There's more geese in that line. <laughs> Is that always the way? <laughs> but look at it, though. The V that's never even. Yeah. And I know that they always change because the first one is the hardest one. Mm -hmm. has the hardest job of flying, and they rotate. I know that. But I don't know. I This has been one wacky year, I tell you. Yep. All the way around. <laughs> So hopefully I'll, it'll calm down. Life will be good. And I'm not looking forward to winter, but winter we don't travel as much. I mean, we do a day trip or something, but so you're home Yeah, we more. don't schedule as many trips no. because of that. But in Minnesota, summer's our only time to do fun stuff. So you got to go with long up in, days. Up until last winter, we didn't get the snow. So, I mean, you didn't have to plan on no. We met snow, mm -hmm. you know, you just planned whatever you want to do and go. And, and we kind of plan a day something and then we'll just say, well, if it snows or whatever, we don't go. But we'll try mm -hmm. to plan and kind of look at the schedule a week out and say, okay. And you know how much we can trust the weatherman so that yeah. we know for sure. If it... <laughs> the guy says, we okay, I'm on Highway 8 in Lindstrom. I'm right off of Highway 8. And he said one night on the news, he said, it's raining on Highway 8. The Highway 8 corridor is getting full rain. There was nothing. Zero. Zero. <laughs> this guy is on national news telling us the Highway 8 corridor yeah. is getting lots of rain. Up to. <laughs> <laughs> I just laughed. My husband and I are looking at each other. The sun's out. It's like 92. And there's, <laughs> there's not a stitch of rain. I told Janie I gave up with my rain dance a long time ago. I'd go out on the deck and do a rain dance because it was bad. And we were coming home from Jeannie's birthday trip and it was black. And I said, oh, Jeannie, please tell me that's going to our house. And she said, yep, it is. So, Well, we had gotten... Well, Dean even said you got hail. Yeah. We didn't get hail. She got two and a half inches. Well, that was the following 
night, wasn't it? Yeah, that was Saturday night. Okay. Into but because when we stopped it, we we all came, Julie and I came to Jeannie's house for her birthday trip because she drove. And Dean had said that when we got there, it was in between raining and that he said they had gotten hail. And Yeah. Well, we could see it coming home. It was ahead of us the whole way. Like we got an inch the other day and she got over two. Right? Mm-hmm. 2.4, yeah. It is funny. You watch it come in this wall and then it splits. And yeah. we're right here. Or it just dissipates yes. and it's gone. Yeah. It's, yeah. I don't know. We must be in a, a pocket of really dry air or something that we're not. Um, they said fall, it changes, and we'll get more rain. And we did get an inch, finally. But our yard looks like a crispy critter. I, I yeah. Don't know. Oh, well. Know. Okay, so now... We, we can't are... control that, but we can control our stitching. Yes, we can. Um, now we're on to just finishes. Mm-hmm. I have none. I have some. Excuse me. This was my birthday start two years ago oh i do the chart first and it is um when this you see needle art by marjorie massey yep she's french or something because she always puts um stitch alongs on her website and Oh, it's all in a different language. And it's the called for DMC on 18 count tea coffee dyed by me. That's very pretty blues. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's very pretty blues. I got to go searching for a frame. We should do that one day. Just go thrift shopping and look for frames because I would like to find some frames too. Yeah. We did that once a long time ago. We'll have to do that again. Then this one is Hands on the de Design Stitch Happy. Stitch some happy. And I did this on 16 count pewter Ada by Picture This Plus. I'm thinking what the name is. PTP. <laughs> there she is with the called for DMC. That's very cute. So then I did. Cornelius. Last time you did Henry. Hattie. Hattie. Don't say Henrietta. No. The, the new one out is Edna. Oh. I had a great aunt, Edna. Did you? Yes. And there is Cornelius. It's funny. You know all your history. I don't know much history at all about my great aunts. Great. I know my grandma. Well, that's grew up about... with her. Oh. She was a high school teacher at one point, and it was in those days that once she got married, she was no longer able to teach because married women could not teach right, school. Right. So she was the one that... um. I don't even know my grandmother's maiden name. I've been trying to find that out. Oh. I don't even know it. Not that she was... Do you, did you interact with her as a child? Yeah, she lived with us for oh, several years. Okay. But I never knew her. When I was young, I, I don't know her. I know her married name, but I don't know her. Okay. Um, Well-rounded by Hands-On Design. I did the October one, and then I did it on Welchel, Welchel? Welchel. Rain, 16 Count Ada. And, okay, here's one of them. The call for DMC. And here's another one. And then the third one has birds in a birdhouse. Yeah, on. that one's cute. That's a birdhouse. So got a few things I need to do finishing. Okay, so that is my fully finishes. Okie dokie. Yes. So now we will move on to our whips, right? Mm hmm. Um, and my two whips for this month. I've been working on Quaker Diamonds. And I've got this stuff up here done. And I was working on this big diamond. It's a big Ooh. diamond. Um, and I had part of it done, the middle of it done. But now the whole big diamond is totally done. 
I can, what I'll do is I'll just open it up a little bit more and do this so you can What's see. What's it on? It's on um, 28 Count Mellow by, um, I think it's Picture This Plus. So are you doing two over two? No, no. Mm, yes, two over two. And I'm using Baldani. Um, you want a board? Thread. I don't think I need a board. I think it's, and the Baldani thread are these little, um, it came in a box as part of a kit. So it's these little round balls and they're three strands. Um, and you use all three strands. So you get really good coverage. Oh, so it's three over two. Oh, yeah. It is three over two. Okay. You're right. It's three strands over two thread. And there's a whole... That diamond is now finished. This is the one that the little letters next to the big ones are one over one. One over one, right. They are. They're one over one. And you don't have to do them in the pattern, she says. You don't have to do them. I but this it. is this is by far, I think, the most beautiful thing I've ever done. I wish you could see it in person because, I don't know, there's something about Valdani's um, variegation. I don't... But now, the colors are a little brighter than normal for you, aren't they? Maybe. But they still have that dusty appearance yeah. to them. That, um, and I think maybe they look brighter because there's better coverage, too. Yeah. You have three over... Well, three over two, you're right. But now um, I think I'm going to go probably since I'm st I think I'm going to try to get this down and then go down and then across. So get the whole top done? Yeah, get the whole. Because this is like two pages. If you get this all done, that's like two pages. So I think that's what I'm going to work on is try to get this whole upper section done. Is this your large focus piece that you've been working on? You know, on? I've been alternating between this and I had, a, I had a Father Kind and True. Okay. Those are the two I'm going back and forth with. And it just depends on, I don't know, I guess I say whatever my mood is that night. Um, they're both in, they're both sitting right next to me and they're both in hoops all ready to go. The threads are both out on my table so I can just kind of pick it up and um, I didn't take either of these on vacation. I took some handwork. I'm doing little hexes, half inch hex or quilt. quilting. Yeah, quilting up north because I was down at the lake and stuff. And I just thought this is, you know, I had my whole family there. So people are always talking to you and stuff. So I, and the kids are around. We, you know, they're fish. They lived in the water the whole week. So. Um, I didn't do really cross stitch up there. The only thing I did is tore out those three flowers. That's all I did. You know, one. Afternoon. You went backwards. I did, and I know everybody says Jean at the attic says keep going forward, and I can't because if oh. I if I do that, I would stare at that the rest of my life. Well, and there wasn't a way you could fix it with that satin stitching. No, there wasn't any way I could fix it unless I didn't do the satin stitching. I yeah, but you had it what three fourths of the way done. I did. I had it. That's when I ran into it, so I, I had to do it. And I'm just not one of, I am that way. I will look at it forever and know that that mistake is there. So I do go backwards to go forward. I'm, I just do. That's me. Um, this is my new little small that I've been working on, Plum Street Samplers. It's called Autumn Cottage. It's a pin keep. Mm. I just thought I'll do something for Autumn. Um, this is how far I am. Um, this is like the left side. I think I just have the flower. I'm working on the flower up here, and that then that's all done. Then the that side of the. And you go to the house. Yeah, then I'll go to the house, which you know houses take a while, and then it's the same thing only mirrored on the other side. So, um, I always say, oh yeah, these don't take very long, but I'm not saying that because everything I do takes long. What so. are you stitching on? Good question. Um. What am I stitching on? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Called for colors? I don't Floss? think so. This is um, 40 count sheep straw and it calls for um, Plum Street Blend by R&R. &R. But you're doing the floss is the call for. Yeah, the flosses are the call for because I, I had them with me. And I picked out the flosses, and I had the fabric with me. So I thought if something was wrong, but it isn't like I don't have flosses at home, you know, or anything. 
If I, but so far they've all, everything looks good. Yeah, it so, does look yeah. very good. I'll keep going on it. But you know, I always say, well, that won't take long. But for me, I don't know. Every I'm either a slow stitcher and a, I don't know, I must stitch what, three, three hours a night? Maybe? You know, these samplers that everybody, oh, houses. Oh, it's got a beautiful house. Oh, look at that house. They take a long time. I'm stitching a house right now. Yeah. Well, I've got it done and it's like, oh, that house. Yeah, it takes, it takes, it takes a minute to do a house. <laughs> and I enjoy them. I, I do. And like, I, I'm really loving both of the samplers I'm working on. Mm -hmm. And I just... Are just, you going to start a new sampler next month for a sampler September? And you know, everybody's talking about that and I don't know. I'm, I'm Or just work on what you have? Trying to work on what I have because I, I keep telling myself, if you don't work, I mean, I want samplers in my house. So if I don't work on samplers, they aren't going to get done. Who's going to do them? So if I keep starting samplers... You got to finish something sometimes. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I've been watching, I think she was, she's called... The monogamous stitcher. Recovering? Recovering monogamous stitcher. And she always has a focal point. She uses her oldest stitch as her focal point, which means she does it for seven days. A month. A month. And then the other days she's working on other stuff. And I kind of thought about that. And I thought about Carol's five on five, where you work mm -hmm. on five things for the month, five days apiece, too. I don't but know. But that, that's whips, right? That they're doing that for? Well, yeah, but the the recovering monogamous stitcher, she she'll add new things in for her se focus for seven days. Not seven no, days. Her no. focus for seven days is always her oldest whip, right. and then once it gets finished. But what do you have for oldest whips? You've only been doing this for three years. I know, but I do have eighteen whips. Yeah. Started samplers. Started, not samplers. It can be smalls. It's oh. it's a mixture because when we first started, I tried um, Mania. Oh, May? Yeah. That lasted the 18 whips and then I was done. <laughs> I can't do that. That's too many things. Okay. Because then you do. Okay. You you keep asking me, what? how do you decide every night what to work on? Okay. If I had to stare at 18 things, it would be very well, hard. Yeah. And you didn't like whip go, so no. that didn't work for you. Whip go. Again, it's like I would pick it up and go, no, I'm not in the mood to do this. So then... But you had... See, my whip go, I'll put down for a block sampler. Or I'll put down oh, so um, really prairie schooler. Generalize it. Right. right. So then I have some options. Right. And I'm not locked in. And I even stopped using that monthly calendar. Oh. I don't use that anymore. I use the... I got it at um, Fat Quarter Shop where I write down my 18 whips, and then when you finish it, you go in and write all the stuff about it. Well, you yeah, know, you, you write which track. days you stitch right. on it. But I don't write, and I write everything in there. That's where I've got my fabric, okay. too. But I don't do that calendar anymore because it, it just... See, and I only do the calendar... I don't plan with it. I write in there after the fact what I stitched on that day. I don't write in there on the 18th, I want to stitch on this. Right, but so if I write in there for seven days that I stitched on, I had a father kind and true, I'm thinking, mm -hmm. well, okay. Yeah, I, I like to do that because then I know how long I stitched on it. Or like when I was getting ready for today, it's like, okay, did I finish that before the last floss too? <laughs> so I could go back and look and see, no, it's been since. Yeah, because I put little tags on my bags. And then um, what, what the project is. And then on the back, I put what the fabric is. So I always know that. I don't know. The, you know, I always have good thoughts about that monthly magazine but I, or calendar. But I don't, I don't know. I don't want to take the time every day to sit down and fill it in. Because most of the time, I'm working on the same thing. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't write down what this. Um, I did my whips. You're up, kiddo. Okay. Um, for cross stitch camp this month, I'm doing some, it's something you haven't done before. And I haven't done a Barbara Ann, Anna. So I'm doing the patriotic ABCs and I do not have written down the fabric I'm using. It's, it's pretty. It's very 18 modeled. count. It's kind of white and gray mixed. Yeah. There's some blue in there. And, yeah. But it's with the called for DMCs. So having fun with that one. And then um, 
last month one of my whip codes was a birthday start and last year my birthday start was pride and prejudice it's the um stitching book clubs and excuse me for the crinkle but look at the floss colors <laughs> she really likes her bright oh, colors <laughs> look at that oh my you look get as that. excited about that as i do with my dark and dirty <laughs> oh <laughs> she gets yes. so excited and it's on um, Antique Lace, 18 Count by Seraphin Fabrics. Look here. That's really pretty. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> and it's kind of like, you know, the, when this month started, it's like, okay, when can I sew on this again? Stitch <laughs> on this again. So, yes, I am loving that one. So that probably won't go too far after I get... Um, Whipco. Well, I got Whipco done for this month, but after I get the cross stitch cam. And then I'm working on Teresa Kovit, um, our Patreon stitch us uh, mystery. And we got the final. Oh, it's filled in though. Yeah. Because last time it was, I thought you had a piece of fabric in the way. <laughs> and it wasn't. It was just the mystery part was still uncovered. Yep. We got the last one yesterday. And it's on 20 count. Overcast Ada by Cedar River oh, Linen and Cedar Design. River linen. Yeah, that's what it was called for. But it's Ada? Yes, it was called for a 40 count. Oh, and so you did a 20. And it's it's one over one, and I wish I would have went two over one. I don't like the coverage. Yeah, it's kind of funny. It's almost, who does it? Is that Missy and somebody else does it? Shelly does it? Where they'll do some stitches way up in the margin to see if they like it? Well, I liked when I first started the flowers down the side. Oh, okay. But then I got to the people and the white. I did. I have done the white two over two. I don't know if you can even see white, where the white is. Um, it's on her blouse. Yeah, and she's got it in her arms. There's some part of the flowers. Oh, yeah, you're right. So, but... What count is this? 20. Okay. But it's fun. It's different. Mm, it's I a like little more water. It's a little pretty. more prim than I like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say that's way more towards me than you. Yeah. Yeah. But. There's a dog cat on top of a dog. What's this? It's a bird, but and then the, the fence goes all the way oh, across. Oh, okay. Over here yeah. by the trees. Yep, yep, yep. But see, we didn't have that one because... People had requested that she finish the house instead. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six was the sections. But she went one, two, three, six, five, four oh, when she handed them out. Because they wanted the house. Yeah. Finished. Okay. So. Well, it's nice that she does what people want. I didn't know we had a vote. <laughs> I suppose you got to read the comments or something, huh? But it, it doesn't matter. I mean, I didn't get to it. When it came out so but yeah so that's those are my whips so now we do haul right mm -hmm. our plans do you have any plans keep working on my cross stitch as far as cross stitch goes right yeah i'm gonna keep working on my two samplers and now that autumn one like i say i keep thinking it won't take me long but i don't know you now so, you're coming to the house yeah so the house might kind of slow me down a little bit but the I did, I did this, all of this in two nights. That was two mm -hmm. nights of my stitching. So you figure it'd be two more nights on the other side and the house is what? <laughs> I don't know. And then if I get tired of stitching on the house, I'll stop. Yeah. And pick up one of my samplers because if I get bored with the house. Or I'll go over and start working on the viney flower thing. Um, but over, sometimes yeah. I get scared. If you got to go too far in counting, I get nervous. So yeah. then it's like, I got to ask, what is that tree? She has this tree. It has these really Catalba. long, it looks like pea pods. Pea, pea pods yeah. But they're like, they got to be at least a foot long. They're about 18 inches long. The, yeah. And it's full. <laughs> and oh, the, the wind is blowing. So all these little long pea pods are swinging in the wind the blossoms this spring on that was just amazing well that's why you have so many of those yeah is that do birds eat that stuff or who eats that green stuff they, they must fall they fall yeah 
The kids use them as whips. Do you, I mean, do deer eat that stuff or where does that stuff I don't know. go? It blows in the wind. Did you open one? Yeah, we've done that before. Are we, there little peas in there? There's little seeds. seeds. Yeah. Okay. And the leaves are really different too. They're they're big, but oh now look at the leaves are blowing and they're turning over. That she means we're gonna get rain. Storm. Yeah, and we were supposed to get it tonight. Okay, um whips. I ordered nope. not whips haul. Where did I get? We just did whips. Um this is called Mary Alcorn. 1764. It's a sampler series. It's from Hobby House. And I don't know if it's the Hobby House lady or if it's somebody else. But anyway, they're they're sending out parts of this sampler first. Hobby House Press. Yeah. So I'm guessing it's her, right? The Hobby well, House Well, is lady? it in New York? Does it have a... I don't know. Copyright 2023 Hobby House Needleworks LLC. I think it's her. I think it's Hobby House Lady. She is a sampler, and she's. this is a drum that's part of that sampler, and she's going to release different parts first. So are you signed up for the whole series, or is it it's one It's not. You don't sign up for it. She just puts them oh, out, okay. and then you decide it's if you like want it It's not like a club. Like no, it's not. And this is um, 40 Count Thornfield by Needle and Flax. I, mean, I don't know. And I, I mean, you do, you get, you can get the whole kit. This is, oh, there's two pieces. That oh, makes tops sense. And bottom. Top and bottom. Yeah. Or just top. top. Top, side and top, yeah. But that's Thornfield. And you get two parts. Um, and then there's all the thread included. Um, and I, I mean, I just love the, the drum. It's real, very, very pretty. So, um, like you say, you can call or just go online and order it. Um, oh, here's a picture of... Don't show the chart. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's the sampler right there, if that helps you. But she's going to release some other parts first, too, before um, she releases the whole sample. So this doesn't bother you to do parts of this? Because before you said you, you, you had a little problem or or just when people would buy a have a, a sampler chart and only do parts of it correct i still have that problem okay but but this to you is complete well it is because she made it complete okay she didn't so she making it complete is okay but if you made it complete it wouldn't be okay i guess not it depends on if you like i mean i don't know about a sampler if I don't like the whole sampler, would I still buy the sampler and just pull out that piece? No. Okay. Is that a better explanation? Yeah. I don't know. Um, that kind of bothered you before, right? When it some... still does. When okay. people only pull out, like they'll only pull out a bird or, I mean, it doesn't, I mean, I'm not saying that's bad. Because okay. Because that's how they like it right they, or maybe they don't have um like the contented stitcher kim she does that a lot where she'll pull parts but when you look at her walls i mean her They're walls beautiful. are full mm -hmm. and they are beautiful so she's pulling out parts because then she can put more on mm -hmm. her walls she can still decorate with that stuff and i totally get that but i mean for me that that stuff like that bothers me i don't know that i would buy a pattern just for part of a bird or something yeah do you know what i mean right Okay, and this is an um a collaboration between Kitten Stitcher and um, Plum Street Samplers, and they made two pin keeps plus the and sign in the middle. And it does. It says Sorry. down the side. It says stars and stripes. So on one it says stars and on end and then stripes down here. So each one of them did one. I don't know who did the middle one. I have no clue. Um, and I got the fabric. It's Graham Cracker by Kitten Stitcher's son. He dyes that. And then I have all the threads ready to go. I just thought it was very cute. It is very cute. Then you can, you know, that's, you could have 4th of July. You could probably leave them out whenever, you know, you wouldn't have to really put them away. Um, this I got online. It's by Sub Rosa. It's 2020, but I like tomatoes and I saw this pattern. Um, I think somebody sh w was working on it on one of the floss tubes. So it's a PDF chart, but I liked it. Um, and then I got um, Blackbird Designs, Lydia R. 
Cohagen, Cohagen, Cohagen. Here's a, you know, I mean, I guess this one's better. Mm -hmm. And that's by Blackbird. Um, this one I, I saw in a, a, one of our subscribers emailed me and said, you need to look at this pattern because, I mean, I like turtles. And this one is so cool because they have, you know, the bottom's a sea turtle and then the top is like the shell and it's sort of like an island. Okay, just a minute here now. Look at those colors. I know. Are you going to go with colorful or are you going to prim them? I'll probably prim them down a little oh, bit, I think. <laughs> Deanie's all excited. Look at those greens. <laughs> yes, and on blue fat. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, that's just cool the way the sea turtle's swimming and there's yes. an island on top. The there. vanishing isle. Well, yeah, and some sea turtles are vanishing, so that makes more sense. Um, I watch Olivia, the pumpkin hollow, hollow. quilting, or pumpkin hollow quilts, and she's been doing this spooky countdown for many months. She She's ye, done, isn't she? I think she just finished. Yvette is her friend, and they do it together. And I think Yvette is the one that is... Kind of charts it. Yeah, what what sections they do. But Yvette finished, but now Olivia finishes. It's called Spooky Countdown. Um, but what I want to do is make those into ornaments for my tree. I'm not going to do the so whole thing. So you're pulling out... You bought yep. the chart just to pull out pieces. Well, all of them, though. Okay. I mean, yeah, you're right. I'm, I'm, is it fickle? What's the word? I don't know what the word is. But these would be nice little, I'm always on the lookout for smaller ornaments. I don't like the big things. Like I have. Oh, yeah. But your branches are a lot further apart than mine. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm Yours is more I, of a streamline. Your tree is more of what I call a prim tree, a primitive tree. It kind of looks like a... Is it like, I don't know how to describe it. My tree has more branches, <laughs> so there's not as many it's holes. It's full. Yes, yours is very full. Yeah, so I want smaller things hanging. Mm -hmm. And I mean, yeah, I can bend the branches to fit things in, but I don't want big things on my tree. I want little. And these are nice little rectangles. They're just little rectangles. They're mm -hmm. not big um and i got the fabric she's using this fabric it's called jack-o-lantern by x j u designs she's using the back for hers because she oh. said the front was too bright okay it is a little less yeah it is see here's the front yeah and then there's the back it's toned down some. yeah so I guess I'll see. I'll, I mean, most of it is black. I mean, if you really look, or a orange. lot of it is black and orange. There's we get some white in there, don't you, or not? Uh, yeah, there's some white. There's a key. I think have a ghost. Yeah. So um, I will see. I mean, I could even, since they're each individual ornaments, I could do the back of yeah. parts and the front of other parts. Not locked in. Nope. This I saw at Silver Needle. It's called Stitching Notes. And the thing about this, it was very, very small because they had done it one over one. And they didn't have the pattern when I was there. 47 by 75. Yeah. And it's on 32 count country French latte linen, but they did it one over one. So, I mean, the pillow was like this big. It was very small, but was it pretty? It was so, so there pretty. is no one over one stitching on it normally. Um, I don't think so. There's a lot of back stitching, though. Yeah, with the words and things. Yeah, like calm and needle back. Yeah, there's a lot of back stitching on this. And they say two threads over one. And it cut size is 9 by 11. So on one over one, it's really small. Mm -hmm. It was... Are you going to do that? I'm going to do one over one. On what? I don't know. Will you do 28 again? No, i probably do 32. I've been buying a lot of 32. Yeah, because one over one, you did two strands, didn't you? Two no, over, one, no, one over one. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's one over one. And if you do 32, for sure, you got to do one over one. I don't know if you could do two over one. Mm -mm. I think that'd be too hard. Um, This is, this used to be, a, it was, um, I don't know if it was at Farm Girl Dry Goods. Um. But Brenda Gervais, this was a class or a retreat or whatever, so it wasn't released until now. It's willowified. Yeah, willow chews on my all the plastic bags. Um, and it 
she, so now the pattern is released. And then I just ordered it kitted from Farm Girl Dry Goods. So there's the threads, and she always gives you a little waxer. And then... Oh, there's the top and yeah, bottom. Yeah, the okay. top and the bottom, and there's buttons in there, and there's pins. So it's all in there. Um, that was from Farm... Because when, when she gets new patterns, a lot of times in the beginning, she will release them as some as a kit. I mean, she only has a limited number. And I never get them because I, by the time I notice it. Um, and this is another one I got too, Teresa Colgate's. I love this one. This one is so pretty. Um, same thing, Farm Girl Dry Goods. She kitted it all up. And there's a little Liberty Bell waxer. I'd like to know, do you guys use those waxers? I use wax for my threads, but I don't use a waxer. So I don't know. I... Do you put them in something? Just a little thing to decorate with? or When it's in that like that, you have to be careful that that doesn't get on the threads. But that's what it's for. Right, really. but can you get too much on? I don't know. I'll take it out before I put yeah. it in my... But you just want to have some time with shipping if it right. gets too hot in a truck somewhere. And then I belong to the... Um, Country Sampler has clubs, different clubs, and there was a Stacy Nash Drum Club last year. And we just got the last drum because um, it took a while, I suppose, for fabrics and whatever. Um, so this is Oakleaf Manor Pin Keep Drum. It's called um, the Country Samplers Girls Club, but it was really a drum club. But there is a samplers club. I think they have a few clubs. Anyway, this is the drum. And then Stacy Nash isn't going to do any more drums, and they asked me if I wanted to stay in the club, and they don't know what she'll do. You'll, you're just will it be a drum club, or will it be a Stacy Nash club? It'll be a Stacy Nash club. Okay. It won't. She's not going to do any more drums. They said she's just going to do different stuff. So I said, yeah, I'll stay in it for another year just to see. Well, even at, at first, they always prim them up. Quite a bit. They do. Usually they will. They'll yeah. change the fabric or maybe she lets them pick the fabric. I don't know. But you know, country sampler, they always Yeah. Presentation. It's, yeah, it's pretty pretty amazing. So um that's that. Then you and I went to Osage. We went down to the Stitchery Nook in Osage. We were, there's 24 hours of cross stitch that we go to several times a year. And during the summer, um, Justine doesn't have air and air conditioning in the place that she oh, went. Welcome stitchery. Yeah. So then she, Os Osage hosted this last one because they have air conditioning. Um, and Jeannie and I couldn't go because I was going to be on vacation. So we went down to Osage a couple weeks before that. They just did it. We went down to Osage the first Friday in July. Yes. So I picked up some um, fabrics. This is called Cecil, and I wanted it for Halloween or fall stuff. And it's kind of, it's modeled. And I mean, there it's showing a lot of blue or gray, but there's a lot of orange. Well, I don't know if that helps, but there's a lot it of... It looks like one of those shout... Uh, little pieces that you put in your washer to keep to collect the color oh, that collect the colors <laughs> there's like gray and orange and tan and um there's some blue i think there's very pretty um i just thought it looks like a stormy halloween or fall night that's why i picked it, it it's hard kind of sometimes to find and it's called cecil and this is 36 count um, and then I got a Forbidden Fiber. It's called Toasted Coconut. And this was 32 count. I'm trying to buy a little more 32 count for one over ones. Um, this is, it's sort of tan and beige. That's, do you think, Jeannie, that's about the right color that it's showing? Might be a little hmm. darker than that. Um, and then this is old, I love old cheap. That's what I'm working on for, I had a father kind and true. And she had more of it. So I got 32 count for one over one. And I just love old cheap. It's so pretty. It just is, I mean, to me, it's like one of those true sampler colors. Um, and then this one is called Prairie Grass. And this is 40 count. And she was just cutting these when I 
when we were there and it it's really a nice it's a darker so it looks old you know it does it looks old and crinkled and so I like that one um, and then I got I was looking for this one and everybody was sold out of it all of the time it's called the stitcher's garden by tiny modernist so I picked that up and then this is hands-on design and it's little hexagons and I love hexagons. I think she just did a floss tube tutorial on that. Oh, I like hexes. I really, I'm kind of a hexy nut, I like them. This is Where the Bittersweet Blooms by Brenda Gervais. Got that. Um, and then I got the Halloween magazine. And then when I ordered from Kitten Stitcher, she had this apple spice, is that donut? Spiced apple donut. Is that what it is? Does that look like a D to you? But anyway, mm. that's the color. And this is, again, her son dyed this and it's a new color, I guess, so. I do believe that is it, ma'am. For your haul? Yep. That's my haul. Okie dokie. Um, so when we were down at Osage, I picked up the new um, Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher book. And then I know these were all the rage a couple months ago. But I think those would be really fun to make for small ornaments. I think Fat Quarter Shop was doing something. A stitch along or something? Yeah, Vintage Stitcher was doing them. Um, and then the um, the cookie cutter one of the same style. And then there was a couple um, ugly, this ugly sweater. I didn't have this one. I did, uh, I think, six last year, but I didn't have the polar bear. And so this comes with the floss and the wooden ugly sweater and the backing. So that's all complete. And then I thought this cardinal was so sweet. And there again, it comes with the, this is from Canadian Stitchery. Um, then the uh, mischievous stitcher. On floss tube had shown this one done um, by Calico Confectionery. I just thought that was so pretty. And then being, you know, you order a chart and you, you pay postage. So I thought, okay, let's get Be True. It, no, these were, these were um, PDF. So, but I thought, okay, they had this one I liked. Um, Teresa... Colgate Patreon for this month here is oh, that's cute. Creepy Things. And we all scream. And I think um, oh, someone had this already done. Mama Loves You GB, I think, has this already done. And then I went back for the ornaments and I got Sweet Fruit. Oh, your strawberries again. The um, the ornaments are five bucks for, and then the USA Star. God bless the USA. And yippee, it's Halloween. <laughs> These remind me of the old paper mache. Um. Then I like this Erica Michaels. God bless America. The Bluebird Salute by Luminous Fiber Arts. Where you got all the thread? Well, all but one. Oh, all but one. Then this one here, um, Two Neatest Pulling Thread, they were doing these. And I thought these were so neat. So, got that one. Um, this one I got from Welcome Stitchery, Justine. I'm trying to find that fabric. 
What fabric is it? It's that um, wood linen by Fabric Flare. It looks like. Oh, it looks like wood. Yeah. Oh, so it looks like a fence or something. Then at Jo, was it Joanne's we were at? And lo and behold, they had this kit. <laughs> and as you can see, Flossie here joined us today. This was, got this from Leanne and Julie on my birthday trip. She's our mascot now. Yeah, she's our mascot, Flossie. And then at one of the quilt shops we went to, she had, it was in an old house and you kind of meandered through the house and then you got to this back room and there was yarns and things. And she had some cross stitch. So I got Primrose Stitchers Seize the Day. Squeeze the squeeze day. The day. Yeah, yeah. Squeeze the day. And this was from, it's so Emma, Starlit Snowflake. And they show it done a red, blue, and gray version. Oh, that's nice. So there's like what? Four colors of the uh, floss in each, or each, you know, you go from light to dark. Yeah, so that was my cross stitch haul. Okay. All right, so. Um, I guess that's it, right, for the cross stitch. Are we crooked? That better? Can we move? Yeah. Yeah, we Sorry wiggle. That. You'll be looking at us like this. <laughs> um, okay. So oh, one more thing I wanted to say. I had gotten an email from a viewer from Gigi, and she had um, sent me a couple charts, and tropical charts, and they were really cute. But I have to figure out a conversion because they're charted in the Thread Gatherer Silk and Colors. So I got to kind of look at... You know, I, I've been looking online to see if there's a conversion to DMC or to something else, and I haven't found it. But um, I'm anxious to start them because it was like a desert or a, an island with palm trees and stockings, and it was really cute chart. So, yeah. So there, that's, I think we're done with. Okay, so we're done with cross stitch. So if you're going to leave us, well, keep stitching and subscribe and like us if you do like us. Um... And then we'll see you next time, because now we'll move on to quilting. Okay. But before we get to quilting, do you want to do your uh, wool? Sure, I can do my wool. Um, we went to Buttermilk Basin. Sometime this summer. Yeah. <laughs> Julie couldn't meet with us, so we went on a little, little jaunt. And for us, that is, what, half hour, 40 minute trip? Depend yeah. For me, depending on stoplights. but Yeah, and I think we that day we probably went to Michael's and stuff, too. Yeah. We kind of did a few. We did a thread haul, and I don't know if we went. We didn't go to Stitchfield, did we? That no. Day? No. So maybe Michael's and who knows what else. But lunch. We did yeah, lunch. Yeah, we did lunch. So from Buttermilk Basin, I got these. They were penny ornaments. Um, again, I want to hang them on my tree. You, you, you'd you laugh because my grandkids come down the stairs all the time. They go, Grandma, you still have your Christmas tree up. And I said, no, it's going to be a seasonal tree whenever I get some stuff to put on it. Because they look at me and laugh because it's like, well, Sorry, Grandma. Is that seasonal? This, well, she does have seasonal pennies, but this is fall okay. and, and Halloween. There's a scarecrow. I guess this is fall yeah me. okay so it yeah. is seasonal yeah. yeah so um i don't know i pulled all the cat hair off and i still okay here's an apple here's the apple is that better far back or close i don't know um here's the sunflower sunflower is really cute and it has little tiny you have to use a beading needle to get through the holes in those little buttons yeah, like mill hill beads huh yeah and then here's the acorn. And when they hung their acorn, they hung it crooked, but I, I, I'm i hanging mine straight. I don't want a crooked acorn, but there's my acorn. And I used all my own wool. I just bought the pattern because I have enough wool. But I am, um, I'll talk about something that where I am getting some wool. This is a um, leaf, fall leaf. Are you gonna pull that up? Because we're crooked again. I don't know why I can't get my, my tablet to stay tight today. Um, these two I haven't finished the very outside stitching, but there's the crow. Oh, that's, at least you can see it. Mm -hmm. And then there's the pumpkin. 
but I just have to do the very button stitch, buttonhole stitch on the outside, those two I will. When, when do you start decorating for the fall now? I do in September. Okay, beginning, middle, towards the beginning, end? Beginning, probably like okay. the first weekend of September. I'll Outside too? Yeah, what I'll do is I'll start removing the flowers that are looking kind of sad and then I'll put some fall stuff in so for a while I might I may have still some live flowers and then um I have a big concrete I've shown pictures of it a few times in the beginning it's a big white concrete it looks like a basket but it's really big but it's concrete that kids and Tom gave it to me for Mother's Day years ago so I always put flowers in there for the summer, but then now in fall, I'll you take it You plant flowers. I plant real flowers in it. And then um, in the fall, I put fake flowers in because then I can leave them, you know, I don't have to worry about things dying. I, for a while, I was putting mums. They didn't last very long. So no. um, I do fake flowers and I really fill it up. And then Christmas time, you do that, yeah. Yeah, and Christmas time, I put, those are the treetop things I put in there. And I do have some fake red berries and stuff I throw in there too. Very so pretty. that changes seasonally. And then I have a big caged, bird cage sort of looking thing that I, I still, I didn't put that out for summer because I still don't have, I have some stuff for summer, mm. but not, not enough to really fill it. I haven't found things I really liked yet for that. Um, But that's, you know, I'll, ch I'll slowly Outside will be based on as the flowers die. I will get rid of flowers and put in, you know, more fall stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully I'll, I will get, um, I'm, I'm trying to work on fall stuff to, <laughs> to at least put some hanging on the tree so the kids don't, they're teasing. Every time they come down, they always say, you know, Grandma, you still have that Christmas tree up. And I said, no, it's well, not. Yeah. Anything Christmassy on there? Or? Um, I had just I have a, some Christmas ornaments that are like sewing machines. Oh, okay. I mean, I left those kind of ornaments on it. Just I would call that just everyday mm -hmm. sort of things for me. I would too. But they see ornaments hanging, so they think it's Christmas. Boys. Well, there's a girl in there too. So. Oh, even Kelsey. Oh yeah, Kelsey is. She likes to tease. It's so funny. Mm -hmm. She's my quietest. She's so sweet, but she's my quietest, and boy, she's pretty sneaky about her little jabs. She she comes up with some good jabs. She waits for the right moment. Right. Um, so pertaining to wool, um, I'll just bring this up now, but they're they're doing a pumpkin village mystery stitch along, and there's they well, there's twelve oh. sh shops. It says thirteen, but Calico Patch Designs is the first one and the last one, and I'm maybe thinking she is the instigator of it. Okay, so it's maybe. all online. Yeah, it's all online, and the month. If you go online to any of these shops, like let me see if I can get them. Okay, if you go online to any of those shops, it will pull up with this page that you can print off. But what you do is every week through October, it starts. It started July 31st. And through October 29th, they are running this. Every week a different shop puts up a new block. And that week that that shop is doing the block, the pattern is free. After that week, it's $5 for the pattern. And then each shop has its own individual, um, like, kit. If you wanted to buy the whole wool kit, you could. They're all different prices. Um, I'll, I'll show, I thought I pulled one up while you were talking, so I can at least show you one. This one is really cute. It is a pumpkin house, and it has a witch's, look at the hat. And it's all, it's like it's sort of a crazy patch quilt. How big are they? Um, block one. I don't see anything. I don't know. Does it say anything on there? It doesn't, does it? And each of them on the background is regular fabric. It'll be some sort of like calico fabric or... Um, and, and so this one is called the Woolery, and if you get the kit, the, the blocks will have this little wooden, all of them will have a little wooden 
name like that one was the woolery and and it's an oval i can show you again it's oval and it's a little wooden sign that it's right there the woolery that's a little wooden sign so if you buy the kit you get these little wooden signs with them um, but like I say, every month the pattern is free, or every week the pattern is free. But now the, it's been three weeks now. Through the 20th is uh, traditional primitives. So if you go if you go to traditional primi primitives before the 20th, you'll get the pattern for free. You can just print it off. And then if you, you know, if you don't have wool or whatever, you can... And then they, they try to separate things out too. So maybe you have the pattern, but you just want like the buttons and embellishments. You can buy an embellishment pack. Um, you can just look at what they're offering that week. But um, like the woolen needle is in this. Um, Calico patch designs, I've heard of rusty crows in this traditional primitive. I mean, these are all people that do wool. Um, so you can kind of take a look at what their, you know, what their pattern is for that week. But they're very, very cute. They're, um, I was impressed with what they are doing. Let's see, I'll pull up Rusty Crow here and show you Rusty Crow's block. Okay, hers is kind of cute. It's, um, it's an eye clinic, Dr. Speck's eye clinic. That's her block for the month. Or week. I keep saying month. It's week. It's weekly. So just go on any of these sites. I mean, Calico Patch Designs. I'm guessing she is the one that started it because it's starting with her and it's ending with her. So I would guess it's called now the here, pump. It says the printed pattern with templates is five bucks. For isn't that this week's? Right. But I just or I just downloaded it last night. You kind of got to go through a payment process, but it says zero payment. And then it says when it asks for PayPal or anything, once you click on that, it says there is no, we don't need any information. This pattern is free. And then you click on it and then you'll get a download for the pattern. Because I did do traditional primitives. I did it. Hmm. I did it last night. But I thought that is really, because um, some of these, wool sites like i i get an email from wool and needle i get emails from traditional primitives i get emails from rusty crow because i like wool so they're all talking about it now so i mean if you like wool or you're you're trying to decide you know if you'd like to do some sort of project with wool this is really this is really cool i i really like all the different pumpkins that they're doing i mean dr specs is you know some of them are whimsical some of them are just plain old funny um, the, uh, the third one is traditional primitives. I can pull her up so you can see hers. Then you've seen the first three. Um, primitives. Um, hers is a pumpkin with flowers, lots of flowers on it. Here's the pumpkin Petal uh, parlor. That's yeah, this week. That's this week's. That's what she called hers, and she has a little wooden sign with hers too that you can get if you want. But they're very cute. I I, I guess I can't tell you what size the blocks are. I don't know. You think they're twelve inches? I don't know. Yeah, I I guess I haven't looked that far, but they're very cute. So, um, since we're talking about wool, I just thought I'd mention that. Okay. Um. For, before I sh we go into the quilt quilt, last, last time we, I, I showed you behind me, we had that um, Drunkard's Path quilt hanging behind us, and I didn't have the pattern. I couldn't find it. Um, this is the book. I found it. And it's this quilt right here that I did. And it's funny because when I look in here, I did another quilt to here. There it is right there. That's that's the quilt I did. Um, the other quilt I did, which my son has, I did this a long time ago for him. He wanted a quilt that reminded him of car racing, checkered flags. And the, the quilt I made looks exactly like oh, big. this. It's huge. It's a it's a king size. He oh, wanted nice. he wanted it big, and it's all diamonds and 
it was he still has it I just saw it yesterday when I was at his house so that's kind of cute okay um my finished quilt it's from remembering Adelia and I did this quilt it's it's um applique and it's called orange peel it's called orange peel quilt there it is that's what um I'm not even asking how big it is right uh -uh. Oh, okay and there this is my version of it um <laughs> and Jeannie was the I sent her pictures because I was trying to figure out what to do for my border because I had done all of these and these were on my design wall and then I so I keeps I kept sending her pictures of what should I do for a border and this is the one actually we both like this is once I hung this up I knew I liked it so and you got the peel in the corners yep put the peels in the corners um and that's it gang it's just a square and you applique the little wedge on um, and then you just sew them together. And it was a fun quilt. It didn't take very long. And I'm going to hang it in my bedroom, so it'll be good. Um, I can tell you how big it is. Did you get a new quilt hanger rack for your bedroom? Um, I had, <laughs> under the stairs, I have several quilt racks that I forgot about. They're, they're just sitting there waiting. And one is five feet long, which is too big. But I asked Tom, I said, can we cut it down? Because the parts that are screwed, you can unscrew them and we can cut it off. Mm. And it's just walnut stain. It's just very basic stain because I, I mix the walnut stain and put it next to it. So how like does the, the uh, quilt, how, do, how does the quilt go on it? It isn't, see like this one over here I have, you have a rod pocket behind. Um, it does have a rod pocket in it, but see, you can unscrew the side and then cut the shelf oh, okay. and cut the hanger. So it has a shelf too? Yes. Oh, it nice. Does. So nice. it'll be easy to cut it down to the size I need. Because I would really like, the hanger I have there is only 30 inches on the inside. Mm. And you can't hang very many quilts. What can there. you go up to? 30 inches. No, 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 no. What can you put in? What what size quilt rack can you put in there in that space? Oh, I can go up to fifty nine inches. Oh, so I can. So you don't have to cut much off of that one. No. I oh, don't. nice. So um, but I do need to cut. I want some space. I don't want it right up to the corner of the wall and to the edge of no. the window. That's it. Looks no. So it, I'm like, yeah. we're just gonna give it a little bit in. Yeah. Nice. Um, this quilt is 37 by 37 finished. Okie dokie, do you got any, any quilts? Um, on the back wall is our club quilt. It is, uh, Kim Deal, um, I know what. Spools, on spinning spools. Scraps oh. of kindness. Yeah. And so here's like what it's going to look like when it's completely done. And we've got all the installments, and this is three months worth. Um, so in the middle of each spool, I don't know if you can see, there's a quilt block. I've been working on that. This one behind us is a uh, flea market rescue. I had gotten this bag of pieces and blocks and put it together and um, quilted it. So it feels really nice. It, um, they were hand pieced and with the curves, um, they did not lay flat. Uh, there was tents, there was waves, but I was able to, you know, get it flat enough to quilt. You can, there's some yeah, little, not, yep. but, um, That's you know, a galloping horse, you won't see that. <laughs> So those, those are what I have been working on for quilting. Okay. Yes. So now we're going to haul? Sure. Um, her birthday trip we just went on. Um, and I found this kit. It looks like this. Um, and it's exactly the size I need for my bench out in front for fall. So that's what it looks like finished. 
and what we did was it, right now it's the Minnesota Shop Hop. And this one's been going on for 17 years. And it is not quite three weeks. I guess it would, yeah, it would be about three weeks this time of the year. And um, they, they have them in different sections. And you get this passport in each section. And then as you go to a store, you get a stamp. And if you complete all the uh, stores in the section, they have a prize. And um, there's nine sections. And if you do them all, then it goes in for an Alaskan cruise package for two gift certificates, regional prizes and stuff. But anyway, so last week we went two days and we went to 13 shops. In two, we finished two sections. So, yeah. That's kind of the background of it. Yeah, it's been going on 17. And they make, they design specialty fabric um, that can only be sold. It can be pre-sold, but nothing can leave the shops until the day of the first day of the shop hop. So they have the, yeah. Um, and this is all the fabric in that, in that kit. It makes a whole panel. So it's four feet wide. Um, I don't know if it tells you. Yeah, it's 64 inches long. And my bench is four feet, so it'll fit perfect for fall on there. So I think I'm going to start this and try to get it done. I hang that in your bedroom instead, and you don't have it get it faded. Oh, oh I have UV, UV spray oh, that's for right. the fabric. Um, and then I found this fabric, which, do I have it upside down? Of course I do. There, you can kind of see it. Um, and there's an eagle there. I thought I would make a couple of bags with it. Um, and then I found this red star to go on the top of the bag. There's a star in the eagle. Yeah, there's a star in the eagle. It's a really cool fabric. So that was kind of what I bought for my haul for our trip. I just bought various fat quarters. You were looking for greens when we were... Yeah, I got uh, to match my cupboards downstairs so that I can, um, uh, but then I bought this, this fat quarter bundle. It was la one of last year's um, section giveaways. And this year, the section giveaway was this bundle. That's eight fat quarters. So find something to do with that. Um, yeah, and then I bought some of the Minnesota fabric and some of the jadeite type uh, fat quarters. Just something to look for when we go into the shops. They were the some shops we've never been to, and and some there's one that's a a fan favorite of ours and yeah, sewing seeds. Yeah, very nice. And we stayed overnight and yeah, we had a good time. Yeah. Now we'll do. Julie's shop hop, and then we're going to go to Galleria at the end of September. Needlework at Galleria, yep. We yep, got we into the Round Robins. Yep, we did all the Round Robins, so that'll be our first time there. Um, that'll be kind of interesting. St. Uh, Charles, Missouri, just outside of St. Louis. Yeah. And um, welcome Stitchery. Justine is having a class with Lucy Beam, if anybody's interested in that, and you're in the near Next vicinity. Month. Yeah. Um, yeah. That would be very fun to go to, too. It's the week before Galleria, though. Yeah, yeah, we leave that Wednesday, so we decided not to go. Not to oh, go. I wanted to mention, too, my grand, my favorite granddaughter made me these earrings. <laughs> it's her only granddaughter. <laughs> oh, that's cute, though, that she did that. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, that's about you. it. I, I think I'm going to work on this Harvest Wishes next for quilting. Um. If I can get it out on my bench by September, that would be great. I'm going to try. Ooh. Whoa. I'm going to try. Might not be the first day of September, <laughs> but I'm going to try. Well, you should. The, the, the rest of the month is pretty normal, average. Yeah, I don't think, other than Orinoco now. This weekend. Yeah, then my trips are done until we go to either... Galleria or Julie's birthday, depending on which one comes mm -hmm. first. So I think, 
I think I can finally. Kind oh, of... you're going to Minnesota quilt show, or Wisconsin quilt show too, beginning of September. Yeah, that's September seventh and eighth. I'm going. I'm going to look for um, stencils. Is one of my high things. And then there's always a Bernina lady there that she always says 25% off of Bernina stuff. So um, I'm going to make a couple, you know, write a little list of stuff. Um, but mainly I want to look for stencils or things more for quilting. I mean, if I, you know, usually... For the actual quilting. Yes. The stitching, the quilting the part. The stitching, putting yes. the layers. Stencils, yeah. yes. Um, see if there's any new products or anything out for, you know, quilting. Not sewing, quilting. Yes, that's kind of my main reason for going. Um, I, we haven't been to a quilt show in a long time, so I'm, I'm kind of... Yeah, I know, COVID, yeah. But I, I thought it'd be kind of fun to go, so I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. Okay, gang, I think we're done. So you guys keep on stitching. Um, and hopefully, will we be back before Galleria? We can, I'm saying yes. I, what we should do is, every time we do this, we should just pencil in a date on our calendars today yeah. for a month to try to get it on track. I mean, seriously, this is... <laughs> and now we're heading into the W word, so we get calmer. Oh. Yeah, we, we get calmer, go. but then there's snow day stitching. Oh, yeah, oh, goody, goody. <laughs> she had a lot of that last yeah, year. Yeah, I kind of old geed on <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, you did. So, we'll, we'll, we're going to try to get on track here. We promise we'll try hard. I don't know what else now to we say. We can just keep life out of the way. Yeah, life. Hopefully life calms down now, for me anyway. I've had yeah. enough. Thank you. <laughs> I need some calm. <laughs> All right, so hopefully we'll see you in a month. Keep stitching yep. and like and subscribe. If Flossie you... says goodbye. Yeah, Flossie, good old Flossie. She's oh. so cute. Did you have a... Oh, a turtle tip. Turtle tip. <laughs> um, Tibbet. Since I have baby turtles hatching, um, baby turtles, when they're born, they have an egg tooth on the tip of their nose. It's a little sh tight... Um, it's just a little pointy thing. When they come out of the... They use that to get out of the <coughs> egg. They actually use it to cut the egg. So that helps them, and it stays on for about two weeks, and then it falls off. And it, it is. It's like a piece of bone, and you, you can see it. If you find a baby turtle and it still has that on, they're under two weeks old. Um, also, when they're in the egg, they have a yolk sac under them. And that yolk sac is what feeds them. It, it kind of reminds me of like a placenta. Really, mm. it really does. That's what it does is it feeds them, keeps them alive. Well, a lot of times when they hatch, they still have a little bit of that. And it does. It looks just like the yolk of an egg. It's yellow. Um, Jean, Jeannie's seen it. And what happens is if they if they hatch a little early, you have to put them on a ring or something. And I just make wet paper towel rings and you set them on the ring. Because that that bump, they can't walk or anything. They're, they're waddling over. And I mean, they're really funny to kind of watch, but I put them on a little wet paper towel ring until that. What happens is that is, that totally gets absorbed into their stomach. And as you see the yolk go into their body over days, their shell comes together and seals. Um, I kind of, Reminds me kind of our belly button, sort of. But their, their shell is open with that yolk hanging out. They're not the egg shell. Not the egg shell. It's yolk. It's it's a yolk inside I mean, of what, the egg. The shell that is, is their turtle shell. Yeah, their turtle yeah. shell is still kind of split open. And that yolk is hanging out. And it's a circle. And it has a really light skin on the outside of it to help it not break. If that breaks or whatever, they die. It's, mm, it's it, their food source. Yeah, because that's their food source, their living source, until their shell absorbs all that and their shell totally seals. That's very important to watch because they that's their food source. So what happens is once their yolk sac gets all absorbed and their shell is sealed, they're in this hole in the ground. And I don't know what, what makes... The first baby turtle decide, okay, it's time to crawl out of this hole. They all wait, though. They're in this hole, and they're all hatching, and they're all doing what they do. They sleep and whatever. Something clicks that, okay, they've all hatched. It's time to get out of this hole. So then they start digging out of the hole, and they leave the nest. 
Well, that yolk sac that their body absorbed will is food for them and they won't eat for like two weeks. And the reason of that is because they need to find a water source. They need, they'll all scatter. Once they come up out of the hole, they will scatter in different directions and they do that for predatory reasons. Is if they were all in a line heading to the same lake, if a skunk came along or a fox or whatever, it'd be bing, 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 they'd all be yes, gone. Yeah. They'd, be, they'd be dinner. Well, they all go in different directions and they have a radar for water. So they're all heading for water. And what this yolk sac does is that's their food for at least up to two weeks until they find their new home. It, it keeps them fed until they find water where they can now find a food source and start their life. So that is my turtle tidbit. From the beginning. <laughs> yes, yes, that's, I guess, because it's turtle hatching time. And now August is a good time in Minnesota where you will see baby turtles hatching and coming out of those holes. Because they were laid in June, it takes about 55, 60 days for them to hatch based on weather, water, rain, whatever, that August is a time you will start seeing baby turtles. So now, like, I've been going for walks with my husband every day. I look because those little things in the road, you cannot see them. You'll see a dozen turtles hatch right off. Uh, you'll, I'll find the hole, and it's right next to a curb. Because turtles tend to lay eggs by curbs, I think, because it's warm there. The concrete is warm, and the sun is shining on it. Well, those things will hatch. They've hatched. They've survived all this time. They hatch. They're all in the street. Cars run over them. So you'll find a dozen baby turtles smushed in the street. Mm. So when we walk, I'm always looking. I'm looking on the sidewalks, in the street, everywhere for baby turtles. Because in the street, they, cars don't see those little things. They're the size of a dime or a nickel. Mm. You're not going to see them. And they, you figure they survived all of that mess. Yeah. They've survived and they're alive and they're heading to water. Because if you can get a baby turtle to water, you've just improved their life by about 90%. They... They have a their their rate of survival has just raised about ninety percent to get them in water. You you've done a really good thing for a turtle. <laughs> okay, turtle tidbit. <laughs> I, Jeannie's got to hit me sometimes because <laughs> Flossy won't well, hit you. Well, I get carried away. Okay, so we will see you in a month, and we will discuss our day to, today. We will do that, I promise, so we can get on a schedule here. So we'll see you Plans. next time. Yes. Okay. Bye. Bye.